What is a nuclear meltdown? It's safe to assume most people have heard the term meltdown in relation to nuclear reactors. But the basic reality of what a meltdown is seems to be less clear in the general public consciousness. Popular culture portrays meltdowns as being anything from reactors melting down through the crust to exploding like a nuclear bomb. The perception of nuclear meltdowns also affects public opinion on nuclear power. If you think the power plant can detonate at any moment, it's understandable to be worried about them. Meltdown The term nuclear meltdown doesn't have an official definition, but in short, it's a blanket term to describe core damage from overheating. The severity and outcome of a meltdown varies depending on different factors such as reactor design, fuel amount, fuel type, and reactor location. Light Water Reactor The light water reactor is the most common type of nuclear reactor in service today, using normal water as both the coolant and moderator. For a light water reactor to suffer a meltdown, there needs to be a failure of both the cooling system and emergency backups. If the core were operating with a coolant failure and no active moderation, the core will start to heat above its design tolerances. This is a limited fault situation. There are different phases of core damage as the accident progresses. Uncovering of the core with loss of coolant. Pre-damage heatup as the remaining coolant boils off. Fuel ballooning and bursting as the fuel rod's zirconium alloy cladding expands and ruptures, producing debris and exposing the fuel. Rapid oxidation as the zirconium alloy rapidly oxidizes in the steam, generating even more heat. Debris bed formation as elements in the reactor such as the control rods, fuel rods, and zirconium parts start to structurally fail and melt. Corium relocation, as the now molten fuel and core components mix and flow into the base of the reactor. At this point, the reactor is now in full meltdown, and problems can get worse. Remaining water coolant in the base of the containment vessel can flash boil into steam. If the containment is still mostly intact, steam explosions and hydrogen explosions can become a threat. If there is a breach of containment via a steam explosion or other structural damage, there can be a radiological release. In modern reactors, such an explosive failure is unlikely, and the molten core would most likely be sitting in a pool of water in the containment vessel. I want to pause here for a moment and point out these are worst case scenarios and not applicable to all reactors. Modern reactors are built for just such an eventuality. Western reactors are in fully enclosed containment buildings, so if the reactor does melt down, the corium can be controlled. Russian reactors have so-called core catching devices, which is a thick plate of metal that would melt into the corium and dilute it, slowing fission and increasing surface area for passive cooling. The Chernobyl disaster is often cited as why nuclear power is a major threat. However, that was a Soviet RBMK reactor. It was intrinsically unstable, poorly managed, and lacked full containment around the reactor. Building a gingerbread house in the rain and having it fall apart doesn't mean that all gingerbread houses will fall apart. The Fukushima nuclear disaster in 2011 is a more modern nuclear disaster, however those reactors were still built in the 1970s. Those reactors are light water boiling water reactors. The disaster was complex and is an argument in favor of newer designs that are more resistant to damage and able to passively cool themselves. One misconception with the Fukushima disaster is people claiming it contaminated the entire ocean, followed by a scary looking map they claim is the radiation plume when it's actually just a tsunami wave height map. If you need to lie to prove a point, perhaps you should rethink your point. The radiation was and still is a concern for Japan, but the Pacific Ocean is very big, and even the largest releases dilute to basically background. The radioactivity you are exposed to on a California beach is higher from natural uranium in the sand than anything in the water. Preventing Meltdowns Modern reactor designs are very safe and built specifically to mitigate meltdown risks. Some designs, such as molten salt reactors and pebble bed reactors, would be able to survive loss of power, reactor damage, or abandonment without causing core meltdowns. The technology is still being explored for molten salt reactors. Despite its inherent safety, design challenges still exist. Small, modular reactors are also more inherently safe. Alongside safety design considerations, the simple fact of their size means there is less nuclear fuel used in each reactor to cause problems in case of an accident. Meltdowns are serious events and can cause localized damage to widespread effects. But they literally are what the name describes, the core simply melting down under its own heat. 
not a massive nuclear explosion or a world-ending event. They are also something newer designs mitigate and make far less likely. Which is great news for all of us, 